for renewal, contact O'Malley Scanlon Insurance at their Bally Buffet office on 9131020 or their Dunlow office on 952206. O'Malley Scanlon is regulated by the Central Bank. Summer Garden Clearance at Homeland. Omega 200 Gas Barbecue, 179 Euro. Save 50 Euro. Madrid Patio Planters. Buy one, get one free. 2.7 meter aluminium parasols in a range of colours. 49 Euro 99. Save 10 Euro. Shop our full range of offers in store and online at homeland.ie. While stocks last. Live on air, online, and on the Highland Radio app. This is Highland Radio News. Good morning, it's 10 o'clock. Donald Kavanagh at the Highland Radio News Desk. It costs Donegal County Council around €3,000 to hold a meeting in the Oral Leisure Centre in Letterkenny. Full council meetings have been held in the vicinity since May of 2020 to comply with social distancing regulations. With more details, here's Michaela Clark. In response to a question from Councillor Frank McBrarty, the local authority says costs amount as there is a requirement to facilitate members and staff to join meetings remotely and more recently also streaming the meetings live on Facebook, both of which the council says require significant technical setup and operation during the course of meetings. In addition, given the size of the meeting area arising from requirements to comply with social distancing rules, the council says there was a need to put in place an amplification system. At present, the all-in cost of a meeting in the Aura Leisure Centre is approximately €3,000. Significant costs are also said to be incurred in relation to adjourned meetings given the setup required in advance. Concerns have been expressed over the number of planning enforcement notices being issued in Donegal. There are currently 1,198 outstanding enforcement notices, 291 of them in Letterkenny, 292 in Inishon and 257 in Lenties. The remaining notices have been issued in other municipal districts. Councillor Jerry McMonagall says given the high number of enforcement notices, extra resources are needed to deal with them. I've asked the, the, the Chief Executive to look at ways and means that we can get this down or prevent uh, enforcement orders having to be used, i.e. educate people better about the planning regulations. But if need be, that we need to get extra staff and resources for our planning department, which is under extreme pressure at the minute. It's expected a design team will be appointed in September to commence the design stage of the new Cleary Centre in Donegal Town. €100,000 in capital funding has been allocated to progress the design. The new facility will provide day services for adults with intellectual disabilities from 18 years up across South Donegal. The HSC says it will continue to engage with service users and their families at each stage of the process. A motorist has been arrested after being caught drug driving in the Letterkenny area. Last evening, Gardaí from the Letterkenny Roads Policing Unit detected the vehicle driving at 155 kilometres an hour in a 100 kilometre an hour zone. The vehicle was subsequently stopped and the driver tested positive for cocaine and cannabis. Gardaí say court proceedings will follow their urging motorists once again to slow down, never to drive under the influence of alcohol or drugs and to always make responsible decisions behind the wheel. A Donegal councillor is demanding that more Garda resources are made available in border villages across the county. Donegal County Council is to write to Garda Commissioner Drew Harris asking for more resources to be made available in Donegal, particularly in border areas. Councillor Terry Crossan made the call on the back of recent news that Garda are to be relocated from Muff to Bridge End. Councillor Crossan says the resources issue is an important one. Because the proximity of border areas to the north of Ireland uh, that, that has its own issues in, in terms of cross border crime etc the movement of drugs cross border uh, I think it is absolutely essential that there is enough manpower and enough resources available to the guards in those areas a number of retailers in the county are benefit from an online retail scheme. 9.3 million euro in grants has been approved for projects across Ireland to enable businesses enhance their online capability and presence. 13 Donegal outlets are to receive funding, including McElhenney's, Evolve, Foy and Company, Michael Murphy Sports and The Cope. And two people have died in a light air crash crash in County Down. It happened at Newtonards Airport last night, home to the Ulster Flying Club. James Gould is at the scene. Police say they received a report at 20 past 8 that a light aircraft had crashed at the airport. Emergency services attended the crash site, but it was confirmed this morning that two people were pronounced dead at the scene. With very few details at the minute, it's unclear if the victims were part of the Ulster Flying Club. 
A small police presence remains at the scene here with access to the airport cordoned off to the public. With a forecast and after a mostly cloudy start with some showers, but Aaron say that cloud will slowly thin out during the morning, allowing some sunny spells to develop. Mostly dry conditions following for the rest of the day. Temperatures around about normal with highs ranging 15 to 18 or 19 degrees Celsius, all in moderate northwest breezes. Most areas staying dry tonight under a broken cloud, but some Mr. Fog will settle in with lowest temperatures of 9 to 12, just light variable breezes. Thursday we'll see a mix of cloud and some sunny spells, mostly dry but some well scattered showers occurring. Highest temperatures tomorrow again hitting 15 to 19 degrees Celsius in mostly light northerly or variable breezes. That's Island Radio News. We're back with news again at 11 o'clock. Until then, from the news team, good morning. The obituary notices for this Wednesday morning, July the 20th. The death has occurred of Fintan Houston, 11 Hillview Grove, Liss Monaghan, Letterkenny. Reposing at his late residence from 12 noon today until 9 o'clock with Rosary. Funeral from there on Thursday morning going to St. Junan's Cathedral for 11 o'clock Requiem Mass which can be viewed on churchservices.tv followed by cremation in Lakelands at Crematorium Cavan. Family time please on the morning of the funeral. Family flowers only please, donations of wish to Medical Rehab Letterkenny University Hospital, care of Pascal Blake, a funeral director. The death has taken place of Liam Lynch, Brickfield Court, Derry. Funeral leaving his daughter Miriam's home, Six Lenin Gardens, tomorrow morning at 20 past 10, going to St. Gigi's Cathedral for Requiem Mass at 11 o'clock, with interment afterwards in St. Mary's Cemetery, Ardmore. Family time please from 10pm to 11am. The death has taken place of Sarah Kelly, Ne Gallagher, Lower Nockfola Gidor, originally from Minlara, Gorta Hork. Her remains will repose at Rorty's Funeral Home, Derry Beg, today from 2 o'clock until half past 7. Removal afterwards to Chop Pubble Column Kilnock Fuller for 8 o'clock to repose overnight. Funeral Mass tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock with interment afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. The Funeral Mass can be viewed live on Kieran Rorty Funeral Director's Facebook page. Family flowers only please, donations in lieu to Donegal Cancer Flights and Services. Wake is private to family, friends and neighbours. The death has occurred of Enda Barrett, Ballyconnell, Fulcara. Remains are reposing at his late residence. Funeral mass this afternoon at one o'clock in St Finnan's Church, Fulcara, with burial in the adjoining cemetery. House private before the funeral today. Funeral mass can be viewed live on mcmmedia.tv or Sweeney Funeral Director's Facebook page. And the death has taken place of Clive Crawford, Rylands, at Newton Cunningham. His remains are reposing at the home of his parents, Ronald and Marlene Crawford. Funeral leaving from there this afternoon at 1 o'clock for 2 o'clock funeral service in Rye Presbyterian Church at Manor Cunningham, followed by burial in the family plot in the adjoining graveyard. House private before the funeral today. Family flowers only, donations if desired in lieu to JCM Carndonna, care of any family member or Terence McClintock, funeral director. For more details, including any family health guidelines for wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. Loading at Ballybrit. And they're off. Best friends, Tip and Bookie's favourite are quick out the gates. Oh no, each way banker's been pulled up and Dad's advice takes a fall. As new binoculars comes into focus, it's anyone's race. Down the home straight, it looks like a photo finishes on the cards. Selfie absorbed was close, but best friends, Tip, nips her at the post. For our most comprehensive Galway races coverage, pick up your Galway punter racing supplement. For you all next week with the Irish Independent. Up close and independent. With all the stories that matter across the Northwest, it's Greg Hughes on the 9 to Noon Show on Highland Radio. And you are very welcome back to the 9 to Noon Show here on Highland Radio. Well, very welcome along to the programme. Um, 0866 to 25000, the WhatsApp text line open for you there, of course. Or give us a call on 07491 uh, 25000. Apologies uh, for those of you who might be watching the programme. There's a slight disruption to the stream. Just ironing out a few technical difficulties, which have now been resolved. You can watch the programme on our YouTube channel, Highland Radio Ireland, or on our Facebook pages, or go directly to our website. You'll see a link there to click in and watch in your browser there. 
This texter says, I recently called my GP to get a prescription. I was told they no longer accept these over the phone or via email, that I must go into the surgery and hand over handwritten note. I can't believe in this day and age this is happening. Surely a modern surgery can accept these via email from a verified uh, account. What if I was an older person with no transport? When I argued this with the receptionist, I was told the GPs had to make the decision and that was it. Just wonder if others think this is unacceptable. So I... They don't accept um, requests for a prescription over the telephone, okay? This morning, my family and I visited the Kinniger Beach about 11 a.m., so this was yesterday. They went along for a nice swim on full tide. As we walked down to the beach, there was a tent and a car parked. It had a Donegal Ridge just on the beach, and I would think the occupants camped there overnight. Walking back, though, we noticed that the tent and the car, they were gone, but the rubbish left behind was a total disgrace. Bottles... Cans, wipes, assorted plastic packaging and the remnants of a fire on an already eroded dune. We were so upset by this sight that my husband went to the car and returned and filled a full supermarket bag with their rubbish and disposed of it responsibly. Is this the message of cleaning up after you still not getting through in homes and schools? This is the height of our holiday season and if I was a visitor, I certainly wouldn't like to be spreading my rug or towel near that and letting my children play amongst it. Shame on those people who did that. Best wishes coming in from Eileen. Yeah, indeed, Eileen, it makes no sense. Um, it really doesn't. It is easy to gather up your stuff. You just put it in your bin at home or wherever you put your normal uh, waste. Um, but to leave it lying on the beach, I saw some images of uh, a beach. I think it was in County Dublin. I don't want to do the county disservice, but obviously it was really, really busy one day. And there was a before picture of uh, loads of people enjoying themselves on the beach and it looked wonderful. And the after picture when everyone had left and the beach was an absolute disgrace. People leaving rubbish behind them. And people might say, well, where do you, you know, there's not enough places on the beach to dump your rubbish or what have you. But look at you know, you can put it into a bag and, and take it home with you. It's just respecting yourself, primarily, your country and those around you. But unfortunately, it uh, doesn't happen all the time. Uh, what's your been experience uh, of uh, the beaches on, on our outdoors over the last wee while? I mean, obviously, we didn't have a, a great deal of good weather. But did you find the beaches and uh, areas uh, safe and, and, and clean? Did you? Oh eight six sixty twenty five thousand. Your WhatsApps and texts to that number. All right, let's take a look at the bingo numbers. Good luck if you're playing. It's time for NCBI Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Wednesday the 20th of July. You're playing on a blue coloured sheet. The reference number is S4. It's game number 29. The numbers are 25 57 56 72 13 32 42 81 The number 8 and 11 Phone your claim to 91048833 before 8pm tonight, leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book. Get all your NCBI Radio Bingo information at highlandradio.com. This summer, make some magical memories with family and friends at the Northwest's biggest adventure water park and inflatable assault course at the Shorefront Maville with Inish Adventures. There's a whole world of fun waiting for you this summer. Kayaking, paddle boarding, banana boating, storm rides, sailing. Perfect for birthday parties, hen or stag parties, or a great family day out, plus a cafe on site. For more details, call Inish Adventures Moville or online at inishadventures.com. Are you switched on to your energy rights? If you're worried about rising energy costs and are having difficulty paying your gas and electricity bills, you should contact your supplier. Suppliers are required to assist customers in genuine financial difficulty and can put in place payment arrangements to help you manage your energy bills. If you qualify as a vulnerable customer due to health, age or for other reasons, you can register with your supplier for additional protections. Switch on to your rights and visit cru.ie. Brought to you by the Commission for Regulation of Utilities. 
Experience everything this summer has to offer here at Letterkenny Shopping Centre with a wide range of shops and services packed with great choice and value for you to explore. You can enjoy free parking, Wi-Fi and take a break with our popular outdoor seating area. Letterkenny Shopping Centre. We can't wait to see you. Kelly Construction are recruiting a civil construction manager to work in the Caribbean. A minimum of 10 years experience is required. Accommodation, transport and work permit will be provided, as well as three flights home per year. Salary is negotiable depending on experience. Employees are awarded bonuses based on their performance. To apply, send your CV to info at thekellygroupinc.com. That's info at thekellygroupinc.com. Quick, write this number down. 91 48 234. Fleming Doors, you know. Industrial doors, garage doors, agri doors, insulated doors, milking parlour doors. Fleming, 91 48 234. OK, so we received a um, press release from AIB yesterday. Uh, obviously, their twist on it was that it is uh, an improvement in services. AIB deepening its relationship with Unpost in Donegal. It broadens cash and check services for customers at 58 Donegal Post Offices with on-post uh, Saturday service and longer opening hours. Retains Donegal Branch Network in its entirety with full-service branches in Donegal Town and in Letterkenny. But, of course, what's caused great upset is that Bala Buffet, Bala Shannon, Boncrana, Car and Donald Dunlow and Killy Beggs will be cashless outlet. Uh, outlets. They say demand for services uh, has declined across the country. Right, OK, so that's their take on it. Let's... Uh, Get the take of uh, Patricia's on the way to work, so I'll go to Patricia first, if that's okay. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, Greg. Uh, you, on the face of it, don't see this as entirely bad news? Uh, no, well, I think anybody relying on the banks these days are um, on a, a, a sad road, I think, because a few years back, I, I'm based in Greencastle, so the nearest bank to us would have been Mobile, and we had three banks there. We had all three main banks, and they removed all three of them, so this whole east side of Anishon has had no banks at all for a number of years. Um, our nearest bank would be Carndonna. So now they're removing that and we would have to go to Letterkenny to deal with anything with cash. So um, back when they took it out of Moville, I did all my transactions through the post office here in Greencastle. And it's a fantastic facility we have. Um, he's very efficient and deals with numerous customers every day um, for, for a post office that was under threat less than uh, 10 years ago. Um, he's absolutely thriving now. And I know it's extra work for him, but um, it doesn't seem to phase him at all. He's, he's, he's glad of it. So in a way, Patricia, and you're saying what... you're at the other side of this. You, you've seen the banks locally close. You've seen the local post office step up, step up to the mark. And it sounds like you're saying for the better? Yes. Well, absolutely. I find it more convenient for me. The hours the post office do is more convenient. Um, I can absolutely, I can go there at lunch hour. He only takes a half hour break. So it, it fits in with any lunch hour you have. He works on a Saturday morning. Um, he works the half five in the evening. So yeah, it, to me, it's, it makes more sense. I know people are upset that the, the banks are not providing a service, but they never really did, did they? They're, they're always looking after themselves. So look after the people that are looking after you and, and I say more people should go to the post office and support them. All right, Patricia, um, listen, have a great day. Thanks for your time this morning. Patricia Gill there. Right, uh, our next guest, uh, Pierce Doherty, finance spokesperson for Sinn Féin. Good morning, Pierce. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Tim. All right, what's your uh, initial reaction? I mean, that's Patricia's experience and they've been through this. There's no threat to the local bank because they've already been closed. Uh, but what's uh, your uh, overview of this decision by AIB? And I would say perhaps maybe this is the start of uh, a general direction of traffic. Yeah, look, I, I think this is a, a terrible decision by AIB. I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's terrible that they're doing this in the middle of a, a retail banking review, which AIB is part of. There's a whole discussion. We've been calling for it for quite a while now. Uh, the unions, those represented that were working in the banks, have been calling it to look at the future of banking in Ireland. That's underway. And AIB decided to pull the pin on, you know, basic services in a third of their uh, of their facilities in the middle of this. It's not acceptable, in my view. It's not. We're not talking about a, you know a, a private for profit uh, entity. Like you know, there's companies that withdraw from our communities, and there's nothing we can do really about it. But this is state owned, and um, this is majority shareholding. 
uh, is in the state. And the reason that is is because over 20 billion euro of taxpayers' money was pumped into that bank, and uh, much of it not being returned to the taxpayer yet. So th th there is an issue here where the Minister for Finance uh, should intervene, can intervene, and, and, and in my view, given the scale of what has been proposed, uh, should make his views known to... If you were to, Minister for uh, Finance and this decision was made without consulting you, would you be upset about that? I mean, surely he should have been consulted before such a... And clearly it was going to be a controversial decision. Surely there should have been consultation before that decision was made. Yeah, well, there, there's what, what what's there between the department and the minister and the, the banks where he has shareholdings in is what, what's called a framework agreement. So if certain things above a certain level, um, you know, are, are happening, then the minister needs to be consulted on. In some cases, the minister needs to approve of it. Um, and one of these issues, I would argue that this falls under this because it impacts on the reputational damage and the impact on, on customers uh, across the state, given the size and scale of this year. We're not we would never suggest, and as uh, as Minister of Finance, I wouldn't be looking at uh, having powers to intervene in relation to the day-to-day -day operations of, of a bank. But when a bank decides to withdraw cash services from a third of its locations, like if you take this down to it, you know, in Donegal now, if you've coin or if you want to go to an AIB branch in Donegal to, to, to withdraw euros or to, to lodge euros, and then the only place, the only two places in Donegal are in Donegal Town and in Letterkenny. And that's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous in this day and age. What makes it worse is actually that they're removing the ATM machines from the actual banks that they're withdrawing the cash. Like, why and under God are they doing that? Uh, you know, the argument that they'll have in terms of cash facilities is they want to reduce the level of staff in these branches. But, Greg, we've seen the playbook here. Bank of Ireland have done this already. They've done this a couple of years ago. They withdrew cash facilities in a number of their branches. They put out a nice statement saying, this is enhancing and an investment into our services. You can go to the post office and you can go to the post office and people should be using the post office. There's over 900 branches. They'll tell us that you can access cash and lodge cash in. And that's fine. And they told us this was an investment. What happened a year and a half later? They closed down 88 of those branches. The branches that they turned into cashless, they're closed now. Um, in my own community here in Gidor and in other communities, uh, branches that went cashless a couple of years ago uh, now have the key turned to them. They're lying empty. They've got a for sale sign uh, a, a, above their door. And that's that's unfortunately the route of travel we see in terms of these, uh, these banks. So I think there is a serious issue here. It's not just for customers but also for businesses mm. and for community groups. And we know that one of the things when businesses are located in communities to look at basic banking services. And unfortunately now in a lot, a lot of our towns and a lot, a lot of our villages, there is no basic banking services uh, that businesses look to, which are, you know, the night safes, uh, they, they're able to go in with coinage that you can go in for coinage in, in terms of uh, your post office, but it's limited to a certain amount. And and, and to remove the ATMs is a huge issue. I, I mentioned yesterday on the, on the news on Highland Radio, uh, we ran in the last fortnight uh, a very successful not-for-profit music festival uh, where thousands of people attend here. And one of the things we do every year is we contact the banks to make sure that their ATMs are full. Uh, and that happens right across the board when you're trying to bring people in for festivals or for, for, for different events. And it's the same for businesses if they're operating you know, a big event. Now they're talking about withdrawing these ATMs. And I think it's a disgraceful decision, one that has to be resisted and one that the Minister for Finance, as a shareholder in that bank that owns 70% of that bank on behalf of the Irish people needs to speak up. But can you live with the banks going cashless but the red line is the AT, uh, the ATM machines? No, I don't. I, I think there has to be a basic level of services in uh, in, 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 in society. Um, now the banks, they did the same thing. Bank of Ireland did the same thing. They said, oh look, you know, there's less people coming through our branches and that's why they took a decision last October to close 88 of them. We had COVID-19 People were encouraged not to go into public places and people were encouraged to stay away from the branches. Indeed, in, during some of the period, they were closed. Mm. It, AIB are saying the same thing. They're saying there's less demand in terms of our coinage and cash in our facilities, again, using the period during COVID. Now, Greg, I recognise that people are are, are, are moving. I, I do my banking online um, in, 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 a, in a large amount of way. But even the Central Bank of Ireland recognised that cash is going to be a part and it's going to be a crucial part of our economy into the future and will also help in 
terms of dealing with social uh, inclusion and people who simply won't okay. young animals and it's not just elderly and we shouldn't pigeonhole elderly into that the fact that they can't use the apps or uh, online many of them can many of them are far more comfortable than younger people doing it but there are people there from different age groups who simply are uncomfortable and are not happy with doing it and also oh, visitors think, as well i mean visitors to all part of the world as well you know uh, I, I think it's particularly unfair for those um, who moved to AIB because of Ulster Bank exit in the market as well. You know, they went and they would have looked at the charges and the services and the branches and uh, they might have said, right, well, I want to be able to go into a branch. I want to be able to deal in cash. So Revolut's out for me or uh, some of the other cash just out. And they went, right, I'll go to AIB. They've gone through that whole rigmarole and now they're being lumped with this. Uh, I think that's really unfair. They could have deferred this or, or flagged it in advance or something. I really feel for those people. I want to bring you back in, of course, Pierce. But uh, George Starrett is the Donegal Farm Business Chairman with the IFA. You know, and and, and I know uh, George Pierce has hit uh, on a lot of the points. Maybe you wish to raise, but just tell t- talk to me from your perspective, your members' perspective, why this is a bad move. And just unmute yourself yeah. there, George. Good man. Yeah, Thank that's you. right. Yeah. Thanks. No. Uh, well, I suppose myself, I was an Ulster Bank member. And just after moving to AIB, and Baba Fee's only up the road, right now I was Ulster Bank, and I moved around a couple of branches, and now uh, sort of Baba Fee's moving. I have worked through the post office for a good few years at the moment, now I'm working through AIB down there. And with the five branches in Donegal, and more or less, as said, uh, more or less, once they go cashless, they're going to close those branches, as I said. And as again, rural Ireland's had. Like in the farming game, we're getting hit from all sides uh, to do with more than just uh, the banking sector. And uh, cash machines going, as Pierce said too, and uh, services and everything we get, you know, it's not, and uh, I suppose state-owned, as uh, AAB is state-owned the 70% through the Irish Strategic, Strategic Investment Fund. And uh, I think the minister, like, uh, I'm involved in uh, an oversight in the council, uh, economic and emergency, and they have wrote to Bank of Ireland, wrote to the minister and all that now, and what would come back, we don't get involved in commercial decisions. But uh, I think now they should be able to get involved in commercial decisions here, because this is knowing everybody, and they have a fair, they have the main shareholder in that bank. Competition's going. Uh, I suppose there, and I have the post offices, like uh, they've got a good bit of money there. Uh, I work with Castle Fund there, Fanola McBride, who who did very well there. She's the treasurer of the Postmasters Union. And uh, credit unions, you now we're working with them. We're starting to, they're not just up to speed yet, uh, but uh, they're starting to come on. And uh, I think these services all have to come on to get the competition going. Mm. And the elderly, and vulnerable people like uh, having to move go miles to get services whenever they can just get stuff locally. Uh, like especially people changing now, things can happen uh, online. You, you get, get your if you start moving stuff, the bank I heard of it. They just people getting their accounts froze because moving uh, from Ulster onto AAB and stuff like that. And you no, know, if that happens, where do you go? Start phone calling and all that sort of you go to you? Where is your local branch that you go to to get this sorted and all that? Okay. All that stuff has to come on the line. Uh, thank you, Greg. No, no, listen, and thank you for your contribution, George. I really appreciate this morning. Uh, I do. <coughs> Excuse me. Pierce, between the jigs and the reels, you know, we, we've seen it, uh, people shopping online, Uh, even I never thought I'd see self-service tills in parts of the county that you do see them in now. Uh, You know, I I feel for those going around pubs and what have you selling the bingo for the local GEA club because, you know, very few people have cash. Uh, They're they're tapping or they're using their card. Um, A lot of people feel that we are being uh, coaxed or herded into a cashless society. Do you subscribe to that? Is it part of, um, you know, a move maybe beyond our shores uh, to, to move away from cash? And if that is the case, what's the motivation? Well, first of all, the pandemic um, turbocharged or, you know, did that, that, that type of transition for a lot of people. There, there, there's no doubt about it, just like it did a lot of things like we're doing this over Zoom, Greg, you know, so that, that, there, that, that it's, it's had its impacts. Um, and some people are very comfortable with that. That's fine. 
But, you know, you have to go to the central bank again. The central bank are very clear. Cash is going to be a part of our society. It's part of social inclusion. Uh, not everybody is happy with credit cards. I was part of the conversation in relation to the forum on the future of banking. And the, one of the points I made at, at, at the meeting, Greg, is see unless the state can get a hold handle on the fraud that has taken place. Like how many times did we get these text messages a day? If this continues at this scale, you know, people will not be familiar or will not be as confident doing online transactions because you're just not sure anymore whether this is a safe transaction, is this genuine, is this real? And you know, that you're 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 you just want to deal in cash. And there's a danger in all of this here for rural communities, Greg, because like people, you know, you can you lodge cash in and and post, um, you can go to your credit union, and I would encourage these kind of entities uh, to be used and set up your accounts there and, and all of that. But people are also, we know they don't move from bank to bank and, and that's the problem. So people will hold, hold cash under the mattress or in the cupboards and it makes them vulnerable in terms of, of, of crime as well. So like there are really, really big issues here where we need to have a, a discussion. That's what the future of banking is supposed to be about, about what type of services do we expect to have in terms of society? And that's why I, I and Sinn Féin have said very clearly in terms of the shareholdings that we have in the banks, we shouldn't be selling AIB shareholdings because AIB should be a state-owned bank and it should provide it a basic service uh, to, to, to communities. And, you know, this 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 is just going to continue, in my view. You are going to have a situation where you have to travel further uh, to, do ca to do cash uh, transactions. Or look at what AIB are doing in the last number of weeks, and you'll see some prominent people in Donegal posting stuff on social media. Anybody who's had a, a, a mortgage who has had it restructured. So that's these are people who are not in arrears. These are people who might have missed a payment, you know, during a period of hardship or during the recession, and are back up, caught up, uh, paying their their mortgage in full. But because it was restructured at that time, it's called an MPE, and AIB are selling them all off to vulture funds. So there really needs to be a question about. What, what are we getting back from a state-owned bank when we put our money in there, when we pay our fees, when we take out loans and pay big interest? These are banks that are making a billion euro profit, remember? Uh, and then if we miss a payment, are, are we saying right in the future that loan that underpins our house is going to a vulture and that we can't use cash, that the branches are likely to be, more branches are likely to be closed down in the future? Yeah. And that's the discussion we have. So we need the Minister this, though, because, to intervene. Yeah, can't, do, you, do you think he can, though? Or if there's a will there? Because unfortunately... We have these conversations and people make very good points and strong arguments, uh, but the decisions get made anyway. And probably in 2023, the same IAB, AIB branches we're talking about probably will close because what are they going to be doing? Selling financial services or something? What else is their function? Uh, these decisions, we, we huff and we puff, but eventually they just roll over us. We have to take it. And, and we heard we heard from Patricia earlier on. That, you know, people in, in, in uh, big swathes of Donegal have been through this already. They know what's coming. Absolutely. And I heard Patricia's points and it scared it nearly kind of like, you know, what do you expect from the banks? And I'm, I'm at that myself. And there is, But there is a difference here. And that's what I said, uh, you know, in the first uh, comments is yeah. this bank is owned by the state. The Minister for Finance is the majority shareholder. Every single director that comes up at, a, at the AGM cannot be reappointed unless it is the, the Minister for Finance uh, agrees to reappoint them. Remember, this also, Greg, is a bank that just was issued with the biggest ever fine in the history of the state, 83 million euro, for the fact that it took uh, hundreds of thousands, actually millions of euro, uh, out of people's accounts wrongly under the tracker mortgage scandal and actually took homes from people as well, repossessed homes mm -hmm. from people that they weren't entitled to. So like there is, look, as I said, I, I if I were Minister for Finance, I wouldn't be intervening in the day-to-day -day operations of the bank. But if I were Minister of Finance and I heard this announcement without being consulted and didn't approve of it, I would be saying to the director of AIB, I want to see you. And I would be saying, what are you at? We're in the middle of a retail review. We're having a discussion of the future of banking. Pull your horns in. This announcement should not go ahead in October. And if it does, it's against the interests of your larger shareholder, which is the people of Ireland. And therefore, I can't subscribe to it. Uh, That's what I would be saying. And having a proper conversation yeah. then of what basic banking services were to provide. Finally, just, like, like, just a couple of questions. Just to reiterate the first one. A lot of people believe this is part of a move to remove cash about uh, government's control of people. And, and there's so many people texting me, you know, I wouldn't ignore it anyway, but I, I just want to yeah. tease that out with you very okay, briefly. Let, let me just make it clear in relation to this here. AIB's decision 
is, is about, in my view, only one thing, and that is maximum the profits of AIB. Uh, by removing cash, they remove people. By removing cash and people from their branches, they allow themselves to, to close that branch in the future. I can remember having a discussion with the former, uh, uh, it's not just the recent former CEO of, of, of one of the main banks, um, but quite a number of years ago, and they were saying, if they were to establish a bank in Ireland, if they were to do it from scratch today, they wouldn't have any branches, none whatsoever. And that's the direction where they're going in because they're competing with the likes of Google and Amazon and all these that are now offering cash services and so on and so forth, which have no presence whatsoever. Or Revolut, as you mentioned, which has no presence and isn't even doesn't even come under the ombudsman here in Ireland. You can't make a, a complaint in, in, in Ireland. Because they have an Irish eye ban. Yes, that's and that's and they've turned into a bank, but again, they don't fall under the services, but they have no physical presence. So this is where AIB and other banks want to go to. And the, the decision here is, is that if these were private companies, there's nothing really we could do about it, but they're not private companies, and that's where the the, the minister needs to intervene and All say right. that. Very finally, Listen. just at the start of the programme, we were talking about a newspaper article, 5,000 euro TDs are receiving for their summer break for unvouched uh, travelling expenses. And I said, wouldn't it be nice... Uh, if TDs, you know, took a stand and said, look, with everything that's going on, we, we're not going to be using this money, we'll not take it. So it would be uh, remiss of me not to say the same thing to you, you know. Are you taking it? Is your party taking it? Uh, and if so, why? Yeah, well, well, first of all, I will be travelling up to, to Dublin as I was last week and I will be again during the, the, the summer period. As you know, the, the budget is an important part in my schedule. So all of that kind of work gets done during the summer and gets done uh, some online and some in presence. But let, let me be clear about this here in terms of uh, travel. Travel is vouched. Travel has to be paid back unless you have travelled to Leinster House, and rightly so. Uh, you have to travel to Leinster House uh, and you have to clock in. And if you haven't clocked in that amount of times, then the, the payment that you get is paid back. Um, so what the way that they work it, Greg, is that there's a certain amount of payment based, based on the distance that you are from Leinster House, and they, they pay that out monthly. Um, so it's kind of even. But you have to then give it back if you haven't uh, clocked so in. So a lot of this 5,000 for TDs will end up being refunded then? If they haven't travelled to Leinster House, absolutely. Um, okay. that, that's, that, that's the situation. Like last year, I think I had to refund. I think I missed one day. I got COVID in the last two weeks of... Uh, of December, so I missed the last seven weeks um, because I was obviously isolating. I had COVID, and uh, uh, but at that stage, I had already, you know, nearly done all the days that I had to clock in. I would have done more than would have been expected if it wasn't mm. for COVID. Uh, but because I missed those last two weeks, I refunded uh, the, the, you know, the the, the, the money for for those weeks. So that's, all right, that's how it works. Okay, listen, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Good morning to you. Thanks, a million. Take, Take care. care, Pierce Doherty there, and Jeremy Doherty joins us now. Uh, good morning, German. What do you think of uh, this latest, uh, I suppose, attack on cash? A lot of people see it as. Good morning, Greg. Well, it's just like where I'm sitting now in my business on Main Street, Bendorn, I had a bank next door to me and I had a bank across the road to me 10 years ago. Now both are closed and um, we were banking in Ballyshannon and it was causing problems in Ballyshannon because you were, the place was busy. And then they started reducing the counter staff, so you kind of felt that they didn't want you coming in with cash. Um, and now if I want to bank cash, which I have to do on a regular basis, as does, thankfully, most of the businesses in Mendoza or Ballyshannon, or even as far as Kinloch, i got to go to Donegal Town. Which is a I mean, it's run. a ridiculous you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, By the time you get out parking, I mean, you're talking, you want a, an hour and a half out of your day, I think, you know. Well, there's, 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 there's all sorts of problems with it. I mean, there's a the security issue. I mean, to say you can go to the post office, but we um, <clears throat> the post office in Bandorn is is extremely busy now. With the, we have an, a lot of Ukrainians staying in the town, and they seem to use the post office an awful lot. And on several occasions, I've gone to use the post office, and the queue was out the door. Mm. So this is putting you know, <laughs> more pressure on a business, and plus the five thousand limit is. You know, the post office isn't geared up for this kind of business. It doesn't have the infrastructure for it, and uh, it just complicates matters. Could so the local post office was... be enhanced to fill the gap, uh, Jeremy? Ah, but you look at that. <laughs> when will that be? Yeah. You know, they they only get X amount for, for providing the service, uh, you know, and uh, the building. And, I mean, why should a, a, a bank close uh, to put the pressure on a post office? Because this is, you know, just, this is going to be a closure because they've done the same in Bandorn. They said, 
oh, we reduced, ca- we, we, we removed the cash, and then the next thing there was an announcement, because of lack of use, uh, we're going to close the branches. Of course, with a lack of use, there was no reason to go in there. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but I mean, it, it's, it's, if I, there's a big problem as well. A lot of small businesses, um, wouldn't have credit card facilities. It's too expensive for them. They might okay do in the summer. They might have a need for it. But the charges and the expense added on to have a credit card facility and the internet and all that goes with it, it, it doesn't, it, it's not viable for them. So what are they going to do? Yeah, I well, mean, it's going to be... And I think they, they the realise and they have to have the big signs up at the door or at the front door is, is you know, th- 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 ironically, there is a lot of people that don't carry cash. I mean, do you, do you have... Uh, any idea, Jeremy, uh, with your job, uh, with your business? Sorry, what is the yeah. what is the sort of digital payments versus well, cash well, payments? In, in, yeah, in the in the bank bar we haven't been doing. Uh, it's about fifty seven to fifty to sixty percent card. Tap, yeah. Um, uh, so forty percent, um, cash. Yeah, but yeah. that that has with the covert, um, and that that has accelerated. It would have been about. Forty-five percent before mm. COVID. Yeah, um, and a lot of but, younger people, particularly, I think, and this is not an ageist thing, they're tapping with their phones because you see, it, you go up to a bar now, and there's a line of about eight people with their phone out, you know, ready to go. Yeah, oh yeah, but it's it's. But what happens when the internet breaks down? Oh, uh, I've seen it. It's a nightmare. You know, or, or your credit card machine. My credit card machine went down over a weekend. It took us five days to get a replacement for it. You know, and at the same time. The cash machines in the door, they get, you know, they get rattled at the weekend and they run out of money. So, I mean, we're really just been a really, really bad service in regards to what banks are doing. And, and Jeremy, I think you made the point too is, you know, we've been good to the banks and it, but not by choice. Uh, that decision was made on our behalf and it's a one way street where the banks, you know, absorb a little bit of loss. You know, as, as Pierce Doherty mentioned, they're, they're making billions, absorb a bit of a loss uh, and, and provide these services in the more rural uh, parts of the country. As part of your service, there's the phone lines going again. I thought after a week they'd be uh, back working again, but they aren't. I've lost you, Jeremy, have I? Last uh, call? Last orders? No, nope, gone. All right, Jeremy Doherty, thank you very much indeed. He's uh, the owner of the Bank Bar uh, in uh, Bundoran. All right, that's uh, where we have to leave it for now because we are going to take a break. Looking for the summer sporty look from the best brands like Nike, Adidas and Under Armour? Brian McCormick Sports and Leisure has your summer look. Nike Pro Tees and Vest Tops with matching shorts. Nike Midlayer Quarter Zips with women's tights in many different lengths. Under Armour T-shirts with matching bicycle length shorts. Layered with new woven jackets and quarter zip tops. Look the part, play the part. In store or online. Click and collect on bmcsports.ie. Beat the cost of Brexit with no customs charges. Do you need a UK address for your limited company or personal use? Spice Hub in Derry can provide you with your own mailbox. Have your post and parcels delivered to Spice Hub and collect at your convenience. There's brand new 20 foot shipping containers now in stock, ideal for all your storage needs at our Springtown and Coolmore depots. Find us on Facebook at spicehubderry.com or call 04871 878077 for more details. For all your training needs, Northwest Forestry Services Training Department Bally Buffet offer a wide range of courses from training bodies such as NPTC City and Gills, QQI, LADRA and ABA International. Courses include all land-based services such as chainsaw, tree climbing and rescue, pesticides, working in heights and ATV training. Other courses offered include first aid responder, manual handling and building safety. To name but a few, for a full list of training courses and availability, contact Northwest West Forestry Services Bali Buffet on 074 91 32033. Nutrius Lamb Feed Offer, directly supported by the Arivo Fodder Support Fund, is now available at your local Homeland store. Buy 10 bags of Nutrius Intensive Lamb or Nutrius Lamb Creep Crunch, get one free. Contains intake booster for higher intakes, better thrive, and faster finish. T's and C's apply. Contact your local Homeland or farm commercial specialist today. Visit nutrius.ie for full product detail now lots and lots of lots uh, lots of, i don't know why i keep saying lots loads of you texting in um um as it relates to the issue we've just been discussing about cash and um its availability and its future and what have you 
Uh, hi, Greg. It would make Anne-Marie Russell happy if you wished her a very happy birthday. She never misses your show. Anne-Marie Russell, have a happy birthday. Thank you for being a loyal listener. It really, really is appreciated. Let's take a piece of music, shall we? the best start possible with veggie mix from Gortley Sales and Hire. Veggie mix is weed free for three years and is perfect in a raised bed, polytunnel or to improve your soil. Veggie mix at Gortley Sales and Hire, Letter Kenny. Did you know that last year Pieta supported more than 600 families who had lost a loved one to suicide? Or that we have Pieta centres across Ireland providing almost 1,000 hours of counselling every week. Or that we are now hiring additional therapists to meet the growing demand for help. Pieta services are completely free of charge. If you would like to know more about our life-saving work or how you can join the Pieta team, go to pieta.ie. Pieta. Ending suicide. 
beginning hope. For great food in the heart of Letterkenny's Cathedral Quarter, step into Dillon's Hotel. Using only the best local produce, Dillon's serve an extensive menu every day from 12. Perfect for a quick bite, a relaxed lunch or a leisurely dinner. Try the renowned four-course Sunday lunch with full table service. Or if you work in town, why not pre-order and have your lunch waiting? Great food and service, seven days a week at Dillon's Hotel Letterkenny, with live music every Friday and Saturday night. Visit dillons-hotel.ie The Lotto Jackpot is an estimated 4 million euro. Play responsibly in-store, in-app or at lottery.ie The National Lottery. It could be you. Are you frequently asking others to speak slowly, clearly and loudly? Is listening to the TV or radio becoming harder? If your hearing is affecting your everyday life, Connect Hearing are here to help. Our clinics in Letterkenny and Dunlow are open Monday to Friday, where you can avail of our hearing test, wax removal and repair services. Take that first step to better hearing. Call us today on 07491 13296. Connect Hearing, connecting you to life. OK, you welcome back to the programme. Now, there is a drama summer camp upcoming. Um, it's about nurturing young talent, developing performance and communication skills uh, to grow confidence and make new friends and uh, involved in it to behind it. Derek Redden, who is an actor currently playing Dr. Flynn in Mrs. Brand's Boys. Good morning to you and thank you so much for joining us. Derek? Good morning, Greg, and thank you for having me in. So obviously there's a lot of advantages and fun and development and reasons to be an actor because you wouldn't be <laughs> encouraging our poor young children into it if you haven't enjoyed no, it. Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> no. What was your pathway into acting, Derek? Uh, well, I, I started, my, my first uh, uh, aspiration that I got was uh, when I went to see uh, the movie Oliver. Yes. Way, way, way back. And Mark Lester, who played Oliver, happened to be the same age as myself. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to be Mark Lester. I wanted to be Oliver. So uh, I went home to my mum and told her I wanted to be an actor. And she sent me to the Brendan Smith uh, Theatre Academy uh, uh, acting school, drama school. And uh, I went on from there to the Focus Theatre when I got older. And then um, I just drifted into it. I, Was I it all consuming for you, Derek? Like, were you able to study other things as well? Or were you saying, no, I'm actually going to be when I, I, I an actor? Yeah, I focused mainly yeah. on being an actor. Yeah, at, at the time, <laughs> much to the annoyance of my parents. You yeah, know? <laughs> but they obviously uh, supported you. Um, they did indeed. As, as yeah. we tend to, don't we? Yeah. Um, and in terms of getting involved then in local productions and, and, and all that kind of stuff, yeah, Was I got that important to you. Yeah, I got involved in uh, a Shakespearean uh, um, company that uh, toured schools for which with whatever play was on the curriculum that year. We toured schools and uh, I got involved in a lot of children's shows, touring schools. And then I got into theatre. Uh, I was at, played in the Gate Theatre. I got into Equus in the Gate Theatre in my very early years and played in the, the old Oscar Theatre. And basically, uh, I've I've done most theatres in Ireland now, you know, and I've done a lot of touring and a lot of travelling. Yeah, and, brilliant. You know. And, you know, mm. I was at a recent um, show um, put on by a, a local school and it, it was uh, just transition year students. Yeah. You know, and they did brilliant. Oh, uh, unbelievable. And also what we see in this on this programme all the time and others will see it too is, um, you know, how quickly children can come on in terms of music. We've got amazing music teachers and arts teachers and they do fantastic work. So if you give them the chance and the opportunities, they're like sponges, aren't they? It's amazing it's what incredible. young people can achieve it's incredible. so It's incredible. And I've seen that firsthand myself. Um, like I've seen really, really shy. Uh, well, I, I was teaching last year in uh, um, Ross's Community School in Dunlow and uh, I've seen firsthand uh, uh, children coming in really, really shy, and after about a week of nurturing, they uh, they're volunteering themselves for mm. improv sessions, and you know it was really, really good. You know? Do you think the parents and guardians might have to take a lead on this to sort of get them involved in acting? Because you know, I think a lot of them, either a lot of younger people now, either want to be a YouTuber because they yeah. think it's just in instant, and you're streaming, and then you're a YouTuber, and we know clearly that's not how it works. Yeah. Or an influencer, do you know, maybe. So I'm yeah. thinking of 
you know, that moment of inspiration that put you on your path. I just wonder if it's some fella screaming at a computer game on YouTube, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get you. Yeah, that? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, I, I do think, yeah, the, the, the parents can guide in, in uh, to a certain point, you know, but ev every parent wants their child to be confident and believe in themselves. And and that also, like uh, this course that, that I'm giving, uh, this summer camp, it's not like school. It's um, it, like, I mean, they spend enough time in school. It's more fun. And uh, also you're a wee bit more interesting than some teachers. Obviously, because you are, <laughs> Thank you very you much. You are on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there, yeah. that is also yeah. another, uh, that's yeah, another yeah. advantage. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it's all about fun. And, uh, and it's about, uh, you know, helping them express themselves. Not, not teaching them how to express themselves, but helping them to express themselves, which is uh, also good when it comes to exams, because if they have self-belief, uh, they, they'll they have more confidence. Uh, 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 I've seen it myself. If the, yeah, if the confidence yeah. in your head, it's easy to put it down on paper. So it's, it's like, and e even children that uh, don't have aspirations of going into the theatre, it's also, it's a great assertiveness course. 100%. Yeah. And I've seen how mm. even just if it's sing singing publicly or talking publicly, if it's done in the right way with the right supports like you're doing, you can just see the young person grow. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, yeah. you know, any mental barriers they might have get broken down and they're able to f mature into, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, often the hugely, you know, talented public performing people that they can be. Now, uh, the, the summer camp is taking place in... Uh, in the Christchurch Parochial Hall in Bonkrana. That's it. It's yeah. for three weeks, and it's uh, from August the eighth, so it runs pretty much for for, for from August uh, the eighth to the end of the month, and it yeah. runs on Mondays to Fridays. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, there there are three three. Uh, at each course is a week, so it's uh, from, ah, you're right. I from, get you. from the eighth to the twelfth, and uh, over that over that day, over each day, there will be uh, three uh, classes. Now, I don't like using the term classes, but it uh, sounds too much like school. But uh, there'll be three groups, uh, six to nine year olds, 10 to 14 and 15 to 18. Uh, and their, their, their course will be over a week. So then the following two weeks uh, for, are for uh, two different groups of people. So, yeah. So um, the first week, six to nines, is it? Yeah. Second week, then? No, uh, no, no. The first uh, first class is six to nine. Understood. OK, I get you. Yeah. You were trying so, to make this clear, and I'm doing everything I can to make it more complicated. <laughs> so there's three sessions. No, fine, there's three sessions each day for three different age exact, categories. Exactly. Yeah, we got yes, there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, but the categories, the age categories, are six to nine, ten to fourteen, and fifteen to eighteen. And I presume in these in, in this process, you see, especially mm. over quite a prolonged period of time, you see the development. Yes. Oh, oh, it's everyone a, at different levels. Not yeah. everyone's going to come out singing and dancing and be. Of course. But yeah. Yeah. You, you see what's good growth. For for, for yeah. each individual. Every, ch every child will get something out of it, will take something out of mm. it, you know. Right, okay. So, um, the drama summer camp led by Mrs. Brown's boys, Derek Redden, taking place in Bonkrana. It's in the Christchurch Parochial Hall. It runs for three weeks from August uh, the 8th. It's Mondays to Fridays, and it's suitable for age groups of 6 to 9, 10 to 14, 15 to 18. Um, and there must be huge demand on 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 places. Do you still yeah, have some I, I, across I, the board? I hope. Yeah, I have quite a few at the moment. There, there's a lot of uh, um, slots booked up. Uh, there are only ten per class. Ah, right. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I I decided to keep it down to ten because uh, I want to give individual attention to each child, mm. so nobody gets left behind or nobody gets left out. You know. So uh, basically, uh, there are um, 10 per class and uh, yeah. Now, we're not criticising school because schools are a great place, yes. but I don't think anyone under 18 or over 18 wants to be in the school in summer. This is about fun and enjoying yourself. And that's your focus and your emphasis. Isn't it, it is. And it's totally different than school. OK. You know? Uh, mm. How's the gig going with Mrs. Brown's oh, boys? Great. We just finished our tour. Uh, we finished a 40-day uh, tour in the UK on Sunday there. We finished in Edinburgh. 
What's that like, 40 days on the road? Uh, I know it can be fun and you work with great people, but, you know, yeah, it's a limit, isn't it? it, <laughs> it I, have to, I have to say that this particular tour that we've just finished was the best tour we've ever done. It was great. Yeah. Uh, and do you gauge that by the feedback from the audience or the, the, the energy on the stage, or how do you well, judge success? The feedback is always there. We, we sold The tour was sold out for a start, which was great. But uh, the, the thing about this tour is that... Uh, the audience had their tickets two years ago. Mm. They bought their tickets two years ago. It was postponed uh, for till 2021. Then it was postponed till 2022. So they've been waiting two years to see the show. And we've been waiting two years to do it. So everybody was really Smart happy and go. buzzing. Yeah. You know? Did you so, have any problem with no shows? Because I know some in this country... It's just maybe people's plans had changed or whatever, mm -hmm. that there was some patches of empty seats. On a yeah. show of your scale, I don't think that was as much a problem. Yeah, no, I, I did notice on uh, on Twitter and on um, Facebook a lot of people offering tickets to other people yeah. because they couldn't make it uh, this time around. But there, there were a few scattered here and there empty seats but uh, it was sold out of so. course no it was official so sellout, obviously yeah, yeah. but like anything and i think mm. you know from some some of the comedians that we've been playing mm. up here is that the bigger the crowd the better and they yeah. sold the place out but because of postponements anyway hopefully yeah. that's a thing of the past now right how do people get in touch uh, with uh you uh derek to to book up these uh, slots okay uh if they get in touch by email it's a uh, derek redden art d-e-r-e-k r-e-d-d-i-n-a-r-t at gmail.com okay and we'll retain uh that info here for anyone who wants to contact us because that's the fantastic our number yeah. it's in yeah. the christ uh church uh parochial hall in bunkrana it's for three weeks in uh, uh in august from the 8th it runs Mondays to Fridays, and I love this because not everyone's involved in sport, you know? Yeah. A lot of our focus in sports camps, kayaking, and that's fantastic. Exactly. But yeah. that's not yeah. for everyone, and yeah. uh, I think this will tick a lot of boxes for a lot of people as well. All Great. right, and any children from 6 to 18, contact uh, Derek, and uh, he will, I'm sure, uh, sort you out. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us. And thank you for having me. It's no, been it's a been pleasure. pleasure. All right, thanks, Derek. Cheers. Okay, thanks so once again to uh, Derek. It is 11 o'clock, another hour of the programme to come this uh, Wednesday. But let's take a news update and say good morning now to Michaela Clark. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. It's a marriage that it cost Donegal County Council around €3,000 to hold a meeting in the Oral Leisure Centre in Letterkenny. Full council meetings have been held in the facility since May 2020 to comply with social distancing regulations. A former Carnation Street actor is being investigated after he lit a bonfire on the 11th night in County Tyrone. Charlie Lawson, who played Jim McDonald, was pictured lighting a bonfire in Five Mile Town. The Environment Agency in Northern Ireland says it is now investigating. The European Commission will today urge member states to immediately conserve gas due to the likelihood of shortages this winter. It's also set to raise the EU's emergency supply status to the second highest level of alert amid fears that Russia could suddenly cut supplies. Ireland will be expected to comply with the plan. A Donegal County Councillor is demanding that more Garda resources are made available to border villages in the county. The council is to write to Garda Commissioner Drew Harris to ask for more resources to be made available for Donegal, particularly in border villages. A community health programme in Donegal, Monaghan and Cavan has been praised in an independent assessment published today. Two community health facilitators were employed in Donegal and covering the other two counties, working directly with 4,000 people to improve their health and well-being over the project's four-year duration. And two COVID-19 pop-up vaccination clinics are being held in Donegal this week. The clinics will be held this week at the Donegal Town Primary Care Centre and in Letterkenny, first and second doses as well as booster vaccines will be available. Those are the latest headlines. We'll be back with an update again at 12 noon. Okay, doke, okay, uh, Michaela. Thank you very much indeed. Back after the break. The Birth Information and Tracing Act is now here. People adopted, boarded out, or the subject of an illegal birth registration can access their birth information where available from October. 
A contact preference register has been established to enable these people, and those connected to them, to register their preference in relation to future contact with relatives. This is an important issue for many, and an information booklet has been delivered to homes across Ireland. Visit birthinfo.ie to find out more. Hegarty's Auto Body Repairs in Letterkenny have been keeping cars on the road across the northwest for the past 50 years. Hegarty's are the only Ford approved body shop in the northwest, but repair all makes and models. Paintless dent removal, windscreen replacement, and restoration work. Hegarty's even mix their own paint. Approved by most insurance companies and certified steel standards Ireland, that's Hegarty's Auto Body Letterkenny for all vehicle repairs. See Hegarty's.com. They say you should have your second baby first, because with your second baby, you'll have learned what to do, what not to do, what's best for baby, and best for you. Like the Loopy Loo range from Lidl. Everything your baby needs, including award-winning nappies from only 99 cent. When you know what to do, Loopy Loo. Available exclusively at Lidl. More for you. See our full range at Lidl.ie forward slash Loopy Loo. Book a private VIP screening at Century Cinemas. Perfect for celebrating birthdays and special occasions. Featuring a private VIP screening with luxury reclining seating. Delicious popcorn and a brilliant choice of movies. For further information on our VIP packages, call Century Complex Letterkenny on 07491-21976 or visit CenturyCinemas.ie. Um, attention all staff. Clean up on aisle four, please. That's a clean up on aisle four. And Jacob, who's popped in for a pint of milk, has diabetes. We don't always know who's at risk from COVID-19 and other viruses, but we do know how to protect them. Keep hands clean and wear a mask. Let fresh air in. Get vaccinated and stay at home if you are unwell. From the HSC, for us all. OK, so uh, food experts are calling a viral TikTok trend a vehicle for disorder eating. The What uh, Eat in a Day format shows creators' daily food intake while sometimes displaying calorie counts and before and uh, after body comparisons. Food challenges and strict diets are often staples of uh, the popular clips. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not TikTok. This is just the latest platform, really, I suppose, where, um, you, you know, it's somewhat unregulated and kind of undoes the, the, the positive health message that... Uh, the likes of uh, the HSC and others would try and uh, get across. Neve Orbinski joins us on the programme now, nutritionist, intuitive eating counsellor. Thanks very much, uh, Neve. Thanks so much for having me on. It's great to have you with us. Right, OK, as I say, you know, this trend will come and go um, um, like they all do. Uh, but it, it, I think really it's it's the messaging, that, that the unregulated messaging on, on, on social media. It's always going to be a problem until we get our heads around it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that there's so there's so much misinformation, especially on social media, and it can be very damaging for you know early teens, people that are in early adulthood, um, and as we all know, in our early teens, we are quite impressionable, and we can, especially in today's day and age, young people really look up to the likes of um, very popular influencers, people with huge followings, but unfortunately these people often don't have qualifications or backgrounds in health and nutrition and um, are pushing out quite dangerous messaging around food. And perhaps messaging they don't even follow themselves. Absolutely. I mean, when we look at the what I in a day trend, we're only seeing a snippet of someone's life, right? And we don't see anything behind the scenes. So, um, for example, um, recently I saw one where a breakfast was a glass of water with a squeeze of lemon juice. Now, that's not a meal, mm. um, and um, it shouldn't be portrayed as a meal, but we don't know if that person is eating more behind the scenes, which often happens in the case of um, people when people are eating very little. They tend to then... Um, I, I say binge, but not always binge, but overeat them in secret. And that's often not something that we talk about openly or share openly. Yeah. And this is not people, uh, young people particularly, I think, just going about their everyday business, living life as completely normal, and then just happen to see uh, one video. They're in a, in, a, in a whole world here because, you know, they're constantly being exposed to, you know, beautiful people. Their idols are probably there. Their idols not, might not necessarily be an actress off Carnation Street no. or, you know, a pop star. Their idol might be someone that most of us have never heard of, uh, you know, an influencer on the TikTok platform. And that's who they 
That is who they want to be. So that makes the messaging, you know, even more impactful on their lives, I think. And that's think I think that's for those of us who don't necessarily live in that world. That's something that we have to really uh, take into consideration that what we say as parents, you know, it probably would be disregarded because they trust and believe the people living in this world, their world. Yeah. And, you know, there's a real dangerous trend around this is that as you make a really good point that these are often beautiful people. Right. We have this very narrow um, beauty ideal in our culture and um, often uh, the young people's idols or influencers are put up on this pedestal when they tick some of those boxes. But a lot of the time, the, the size of a person or um, about a person's body shape is largely down to genetics and not all down to the food they eat in a day or the way they move their body in a day. Um, uh, unlike some of the messaging out there, but it really is only a small percentage of those activities that impact your body size or body shape. And th- that's just completely lost in this trend and on this platform. Of course, and your weight, your body shape, is not necessarily an indicator of your body health. And the what I eat in a day format presumably doesn't talk about, you know, what the you might look great if it worked, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that you won't be dizzy or you know, you no. won't have problems with your digestive system or, you know, you might not. You, it doesn't talk about you being deficient in stuff which could aggravate anxiety. You, you know what I mean? Like it, what we look like is, is, is such a small part of things, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what someone looks like on the outside tells us nothing about their internal health. And you can have somebody in a in a very thin, um, you know, socially acceptable, beautiful body on the outside, but they don't, um, it, it doesn't match with their internal health. Whereas you could have another person who is seen as being a quote unquote overweight, but has lots of health promoting behaviors in their life, like eating well and moving their body regularly and sleeping well and managing their stress. And all of these things are the things that really impact our internal health. Um, and yes, of course, you know, if, if we look at after our internal health it will shine on the outside in in varying ways Mm. Um, but they're just you know what we look like on the outside is not connected to how we feel on the inside conversely then if we are going to sort of and we'll get on to it what responsibility the likes of tiktok and others have uh in this regard do we also then have to bring into the conversation uh if they are sort of talking about body positivity being whatever way you like with also not talking about um, potential health risks there. A larger person may be healthier than a, a thinner person, so we're, we're going to accept that too. But at the same time, promoting, um, you know, positive body positive, whereby someone, you know, there's a lot of people very influential that are, I presume, carrying weight that will eventually have an impact on the health. Or is that too sensitive a subject to talk about? I mean, I think um, there's a lot of there's a lot of science behind this, actually. And when we look at at weight, we know that there are no safe and effective long term weight loss strategies. Um, and most people will will regain the weight that they lose through a diet or through the pursuit of intentional weight loss within three to five years after they embark on the diet. And and this is what we see across hundreds of studies um, and rather than focusing on the pursuit of changing your body or losing weight, we really need to begin moving this conversation of weight to the back burner, to to the back of our minds. It's very much front of mind in our society. And unfortunately, by focusing on it more and more, we get more and more obsessed with it. And it can cause issues with disordered eating, excessive thoughts around food, poor body image, etc. Whereas if you focus on health promoting behaviors so very simply eating a a wide variety of foods eating enough food which doesn't always come through in this tiktok trend um eating your fruit and vegetables moving your body regularly whatever that looks like for you so that could be running or yoga or swimming anything joyful and that really um brings you joy rather than torture when it comes to exercise um when you uh you know look at your stress levels you look after yourself in terms of self-care practices when you sleep well these are things that are you can achieve health without Mm. or irrespective of weight loss 
Yeah, the reason TikTok or one of the reasons is it's so successful is its algorithm in that, you know, traditionally social media feeds you information from people you follow and your views may change. But if you if you still follow the same people, you get the same crap with TikTok. Mm -hmm. it, it, it learns very quickly what you like. Right. So mm -hmm. if you like how you can get a bigger butt or a slimmer waist or whatever it might be, it'll keep feeding you that because it knows what you like. Other than you going, right, I don't want to see that anymore and I can't see young people doing that. What can we expect of that company and others to protect our younger people? Yeah, I feel like this is um, such a big question and a big topic. Um, and I'm not really sure exactly how um, we handle it from the big company perspective, but I... I do know that, um, you know, you can, we, when we're being subjected to algorithms, um, and especially in the case of social media, because they make money off our attention, right? So our attention is a, is a commodity that can be sold. Um, and by, um, you know, teaching the algorithm in your social media platform, whether that is TikTok or Instagram, what you want to see versus not want to see. So, you know, um, reporting certain videos, reporting certain ads, being very media literate or very critical of the media that you are consuming. It will slowly begin to change um, what you begin to see on these platforms. I mean, I don't see, I very rarely see the kind of content that we're chatting about here because my social media has been trained <laughs> to That's not it, show you see, that, that, that is know? exactly it you know and Inst instagram and facebook are you know they're blunt instruments if you google you know uh, baby outfits they'll give you baby adverts if you uh you know google cars they think you want to open a, a car dealership because every second ad is a car a tiktok if you like people who wear glasses It'll give you people that wear glasses. And if then it learns that you've sort of gone off that, it'll change it. It's incredibly, incredibly clever in, in what it does. And I just think so, though, Neve, you know, like it has to be taken in the round, doesn't it? Because, you know, lots and lots of people from very young ages are sitting watching Love Island every night and everyone still looks fantastic in that program. How do you get, how, you know, and you're sitting watching that and you go up to your bed after you're sent to bed and you take out your phone. How do I look like that? Well, where do you go? You go on to TikTok. And what do you end up doing? You start liking videos <clears throat> that sort of are doing what we're talking about now. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I think we need to look at it right across media rather maybe, I'm not saying you are, focus on one sort of source of media. Oh, 100%. I mean, I think when, when I talk about being media literate, I'm talking about Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Um, the telly. Uh, the <laughs> telly. Like, I, and it's funny you mentioned Love Island because um, obviously this is a very controversial opinion because so many people love Love Island. But um, we do need to be conscious of the implicit messaging that we are getting from these TV shows where, you know, people are ranked based on what they look like on the outside. Um, and we are absorbing these messages even if we don't realize as to especially when it comes to our value and our self-worth like okay these people are, are more valuable because they're thin or because they're beautiful or because they've got long hair or they're tanned etc etc the list just goes on and on and that feeds into poor body image rates which then fuels the searching on tiktok and the the dieting trend and the what i eat in a day and it's it's really a big system here and you're right we need to look at the whole media spectrum rather than one platform in and I, and I think, uh, Neve, in reality, in the interim, we're going to have to start doing this ourselves because I can't. There's so much money involved here. Like, say, for instance, TikTok, it's investing millions upon millions upon millions in this country. Jobs announced every other month. Can we really rely on the government here to sort of, you know, start making life very difficult for TikTok? I would argue not. I'm not asking you to comment on that. So what we have to do, Neve, I suppose, is in our own homes, under our own roofs, sort of try and speak to our younger people in the same way you've been doing so today. And then maybe, hopefully, you know, society and the powers that be might catch up down the line. Yeah, for sure. And there's no doubt that, you know, social media can be used for so much good as well and so much connection that we all needed during the pandemic. But we do need to be very conscious and aware of the messaging that we're absorbing through it. Right. Uh, I don't suppose you have a quick answer to this. Uh, a listener um, has wants to lose a stone and a half. What? And, and I think a lot of people, a lot of us could relate to that. What's the right way to do something like that? Mm. Over 50, by the way, I think it might be slightly difficult to shift fat in certain places as we get older, but... 
Yeah, I would be, I'll go back to my, my earlier point. I would really, which might, <laughs> I don't know if this is the right answer that they're looking for. Come on, for, just but... say it. We're, we're tough up here. <laughs> I would really try to begin to shift the focus away from weight and focus on how you feel on the inside rather than what you look like on the outside. Yeah, but if you want to get into a dress or a shirt, though, it's hard to, you know, you can't go up to people at a wedding and say, you know, I feel fantastic when you know really they're judging you perhaps maybe on how you might appear. Yeah, but again... You if get we... me, though, like, I'm not contradicting you, even you're right, but I just think in the real world... When someone's asking about, especially if it's a smaller amount of weight, it's perhaps something physically they're not happy with. But well, are you, you saying if you look after you, if you get yourself feeling better, that will follow? Yes, in some cases, yes. But um, the the issue still remains that if we pursue intentional weight loss, I understand this. I sit with people every day of the week who really want to lose weight and have been on this cycle for years and years, decades, and all they have got is higher in weight over time. Um, so by pursuing intentional weight loss, there is actually more of a likelihood that you will end up bigger over time than smaller. And we can see this in the research. So when I say move the focus from the inside to the outside, I'm trying to stop that process so that people don't continue to gain weight over time and instead begin to reap the benefits from actually focusing on their health and then allowing their body to look after itself afterwards. Yeah. And I, I, I think, you know, and when you were talking about uh, you know, people trying to slim down and I put in the argument, not the argument there, but the counter argument that do we need to start talking about maybe not normalizing people uh, being of what let's stop talking about weight. Let's talking about people's health and well-being and prolonging their lives, their healthy lives for as long as possible and ensuring their joints last as long as they can, because mm -hmm. we're living older, thankfully, but we have to make sure presumably our bodies have, are, are, are best equipped to carry us around. And that's not just all weight related. It's just our general uh, health. Absolutely. There's so much more than just weight that goes into um, long term health and vitality and mobility. Um, a, a lot more than weight. Yeah. Neve, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much All for right, having take me. Take care of yourself. Uh, thank you very much indeed. That is uh, Neve Orbinski, who's a nutritionist and intuitive eating counselor. That was our Wellness Wednesday talking about that trend. The What I Eat Today format. And as I say, the thing with TikTok is you might go on TikTok and you might say, well, I'm going to check out TikTok to see what my young people in the house might be viewing. You'll end up watching what you like, thinking, God, there's no harm in that. But their feed is completely different because it's so... Uh, it's so intuitive. All right, uh, we'll be back uh, with more on the 9 till noon show after the break. At AIB, we know how difficult finding the right home can be. The searching, bidding and time that lives behind every sale agreed sign. But when you finally do find the right home, AIB can make the mortgage part easier. With our online mortgage tool, you can manage your application online. Find out more at AIB.ie. AIB. We back belief. Lending criteria, terms and conditions apply. Allied Irish Banks PLC is an authorised agent and servicer of AIB Mortgage Bank UC in relation to the origination and servicing of mortgage loans and mortgages. Allied Irish Banks PLC and AIB Mortgage Bank UC are regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Green Shoes in Kenny and Fulcara have shoes for every occasion. All your favourite brands, from Una Healy, Tommy Bow and Echo, to Kid Appleby, Marcosi and Skechers, plus many more. Shop LK and One For All gift cards are gratefully accepted in store. Green Shoes in Letterkenny at Market Square and Letterkenny Shopping Centre, Fulcara and online at greenshoes.com. Green Shoes, with the perfect fit for every foot. Hi, it's Owen. I can't answer the phone right now. I'm currently enjoying the advanced comfort seats and suspension with progressive hydraulic cushions in my new Citroen C5 Aircross SUV. I'm really enjoying the drive, so please don't leave a message. With Citroen's advanced comfort technology, you may end up travelling further than you planned. Experience Citroen Comfort, a five-year warranty and flexible payment options across the range. For more, see citroen.ie. Citroen. The new Citroen C5 Aircross is now available at your local dealer, Highland Motors, Mountaintop, Letterkenny. Are you looking to make a bigger impact at work? Join the team at Optum in Letterkenny, where we're collecting the brightest people, places and ideas to create better healthcare. As one of our claims or appeals representatives, you'll make a meaningful difference, providing first-class customer service and support. 
Come to our virtual hiring event on August the 3rd to take the next steps in our career with Optum. Register today at uhg.hr slash event. That's uhg.hr slash event. Okay, we're going to try a couple, try and find a few things here. Um, a silver chain of great sentimental value was lost in the car park at Costa near the new Duns in Letterkenny. We have a number here if you found it. It's a silver chain of great sentimental value. Uh, it was lost in the car park at Costa near the Duns. That's a big car park. But anyway, someone hopefully has found it. Hopefully it didn't get caught in wheels and was towed out the road somewhere because, uh, you know, a set of tires could pick it up too. But anyway, did you find the silver chain? There is a, re a reward offered for its safe return. OK, so uh, let us know. We have a number here. We can pass that on to you. Right, Christine Carlin joins us now. Hi, Christine. Good morning, Craig, from Pictures Red Castle. Beautiful part of the world. I was down there not too long ago, Christine. Okay. Now, uh, talk That's to me indeed. about uh, some groups that you take and something that used to be available that doesn't seem to be available. I'll leave it over to you, Christine. Yes. For, for many years, something like 25 years, I've done pilgrimages to different shrines. One of them is the Holy Well at Doomwell and the Franciscan Friary at Arch. Mm -hmm. Now, we always, for years and years, could buy a lovely key ring with the Franciscan Friary on the front of it, and on the back was a tiny little dot of garden clay and Tory clay. Also, the wording on the back of it was that you are protected from sudden death, fire, and drowning. Now, this was foretold by St. Colum Kill. For years and years, fishermen, people driving, I would get lots of orders to get these key rings and bring them back. Mm -hmm. I went with a friend of mine and Mary on Saturday on a private uh, pilgrimage and we were told in the holy shop that they can't get them anymore. Okay. And I just cannot understand this because I have relics, medals of St. Padre Pio and different saints with a relic on the back. Mm -hmm. My two boys, Patrick and Paul, they've been several times to the Holy Land. And they've brought me back. I have beads here with relics on the back of the crucifix. And also, my eldest son has been to Medjugorje, and he's brought me back a medal with a relic on, on the back of that. And I can't understand why this lovely key ring has been stopped at the Franciscan Friary at Arch. Now, did they say that they'd stopped stocking them? Did they say that whoever was making them previously, that they can no longer source them from that supplier? Uh, or is the materials an issue? Did they give any explanation as to why they're no longer available, Christine? Yes. The, the, the only explanation, and I do not understand it, they said that someone had put in a complaint what? that they were selling garden clay. Oh, no. Like, that is absolutely... Well, listen, come here. They're, you, selling, they're selling the picture and you can get a bonus bit of garden clay or Tory clay with it. I mean, that uh, that that doesn't wash with me. Now, I'm not blaming them I because they want to avoid no. controversy, but come here. You know, the, the, the production, the cost here is in... The, the, the ring, the key ring or the pictures, you know, the, the, key, little, key yeah, the, ring. the bit of clay, uh, Garten or Tory clay, you're not charging for that, you know. I mean, I don't... I don't. And it, it, was, it, it was just like a little dot, a little dot of Garten clay and a little dot of Tory clay. And there was a lovely um, picture of the Franciscan friary at Ards on the front of the key ring. And I can assure you, over 25 years, I've brought back hundreds of these key rings and the fishermen in Greencastle, Glengad and Malin, and there we went 
on Saturday, uh, God spares me, there's a pilgrimage going on the 4th of September from St. Columbus and Drum. And I will go on that pilgrimage on, on the coach. Now, I've retired from organizing it after 25 years. I retired in 2019 from doing it. But there's another lady appointed, and she's going to continue it. And it was just to think that after all these years, why would it be taken, why would it be stopped? Well, we're going to try and get to the bottom of it. And I think, too, what uh, most people will understand, but I hope everyone understands, that to some people, a lot of people, actually, um, and we've seen huge, num- huge numbers down at the Friary in Ross Nyla recently for event, that this is very important to them. Um, and it I, is indeed. You know, and... and, and uh, I, 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 I just hope, I mean, if one person messaged in and then they, they stopped, I don't know. Listen, we're going to find out, Christine, uh, uh, what is going on and try and get to the bottom yeah, of it. And, because... uh, Greg, Greg, before before you go, could I say a quick greeting? Here's the thing, to to Christine, family, my... Christine, I want, I'm going to yep. count you in. Take your time. You don't have to rush. The radio waves are yours for as long as you like in three, two and one. Go ahead, Christine. <laughs> Thank you. Could could I say um, a nice greeting to my family, Patrick and Una and my grandchildren, and to my son, Paul, and also to all my colleagues at the university in Letterkenny. We are all on holiday. And to our choral director, that's our choral director and choral Nikila, just say our Greeting to all my colleagues and enjoy your holidays the same as myself. Indeed. And enjoy your uh, latest pilgrimage on Saturday, did you say? Yes. Or trip. Uh, The 4th of September, it's going from St. Columbus and Drone. Lovely stuff. Uh, You'll have a fantastic time. Great. And thanks, thanks a million. No, All the best. Lovely to speak to you. Thank you so very much indeed. Okay. If you have an answer to that, we're going to pursue it ourselves. Uh, But why can you no longer in the holy shop... Uh, by the key ring with a picture of Ards on the back with a small piece of garden clay and a piece of Tory clay, tiny little specks of it almost. Uh, We would have heard there from Christine that the problem is that um, they was someone complaining that they were selling it. Want unbeatable value from Sky? Here's the deal. Get Sky Broadband for just €29 a month, plus Sky Q for only €10 a month. Super fast, super reliable broadband. And Sky Q with your apps and recordings. That's Sky Broadband for €29 a month, plus Sky Q for €10 a month for 12 months. Now that is unbeatable value. Go to sky.ie. Availability subject to location. Offer does not include Sky TV subscription. New Sky customers only. Setup fees, minimum term and further terms apply. For more info, see sky.ie slash speeds. When it comes to searching for a holiday, Atlantic Travel and Letter Kenny deal with all the major tour operators from Dublin and Belfast to find you the best deals available. A week in the sun, a cruise or maybe a short break. Whatever suits, you can book in confidence with Atlantic, knowing your holiday is protected should something go wrong. Take the hassle and worry out of your holiday booking with the award-winning Atlantic Travel, St. Oliver Plunkett Road, Letter Kenny. For a quote today, see Facebook, visit atlantictravel.ie or call 9126193. Kicking off the 53rd Plum Money Festival on Sunday the 31st of July, it's Cleona Hagen. And later, it's Jerry Guthrie. On Monday, it's Jimmy Buckley. Don't miss these and many more open-air concerts at this year's Plum Money Festival, Sunday the 31st to Sunday the 7th of August. For a full programme, check Plum Money festival.com this ad is sponsored by Joyce's Centre Club Money it's time for a new Nissan 222 we have an award winning range so call into iMotors Nissan in Letterkenny or Mallon with the new Nissan Qashqai and Nissan Micra available for immediate delivery If you have a job to do this weekend, did you know that Watson Hire still have their brilliant weekend hire deal available? You can hire any item on Friday, keep it until Monday, and only pay for one day. That's three days hire on any equipment or machinery for the price of one. So there's no excuses to get that job done this weekend. Book early to avoid disappointment by calling Watson Hire in Letterkenny on 916-7777. Okay, uh, we're joined on the programme now by John. John, thanks uh, for taking the call this morning. I I appreciate it, and I wish we weren't having to have this conversation, but uh, here we are, John. Unfortunately, 
Right. Talk to me about uh, your, your, the, what your wife has been through at the uh, local hospital here. Well, uh, she was at the podiatrist on Monday. She's had problems with her feet and she got a blister and it was infected. And she was the podiatrist and she wrote a letter saying she had to go in for urgent IV treatment. So she had to go to her own doctor first, so we did that, and then we took her out to the hospital. Uh, uh, I dropped her off at half five, just about half five. And at half past six last night, she eventually got a bed. That was over 24 hours, 25 hours to wait in a bed. You know, it's just, it's not good enough. Right. And There's something has to be done. Yeah, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. And this is uh, obviously a great stress, stress for her, but for the whole family as well. Um, but yeah, it is. And also at the moment, certain words, there's no visit. And so I can't even go up to see her. I mean, my son's home from Glasgow. He can't go to see her. And, you know, it's a worry. She's in there. I'm trying to keep in touch with text and stuff, but it's not the same. Mm. Uh, I appreciate the reasons for not getting in, but these situations don't help. She was sitting with, I mean, a foot infection, for, so her foot should have been raised uh, to keep the swelling down, but it wasn't, you know. Uh, she was sitting in a wheelchair. Uh, she eventually got an IV treatment about, I think it was about 10 o'clock or later, uh, in the first night, and then, you know, carried on from there. But it just, I mean, I, not the staff, the staff, the, the, I've been in Letter County a few times, and the nurses and doctors are brilliant, you know. But there's something wrong in the background. There's something not right with the management. I watched three people walking around the ward a couple of years ago, checking if it was clean. You know, it doesn't take three people to do that job. You know, that's the resources that could be spent elsewhere. Yeah, and and of course too, you know, the longer it is until she gets proper treatment, uh, there is the risk of the infection yeah. spreading. There's a risk of... Uh, sepsis. Obviously, things were bad enough that she was referred to the A and E to begin with. So you'd be sitting there after yeah. four hours. Maybe four hours would be palatable. Going, hold on, yeah. yeah, is this not that important then? Because we were sent here to an ED, and effectively, she's mm -hmm. getting half the treatment in the ED department yeah, but, in the waiting room. Well, this is it. It's just, it's just a nonsense. The, the simple fact is three years ago she had sepsis, so she knows what it's like, so that's playing in her mind as well. You know, she's been through it, and it's not pleasant. Uh, it's not pleasant for any of us to, to see her going through this. She's got diabetes, she's got health problems, but she's been great. You know, everything's been fine, mm. but she got this blister, and they did say that there's two infections in her feet now. She's got an x-ray, or she's got buds done, and they said there's two infections in her feet, one at the blister and one in the soft tissue. So they have to get that sorted, because that's obviously where it's coming from. I don't think it's got anything to do with uh, the diabetes particularly, you know. But in terms of, and, and I'm not asking uh, for you to explain, because I don't want to compromise her privacy in any way, shape or form, John, but when you're 25 hours in in an ED, like, there's practical situations like changing your clothes, for instance. I mean, you don't want to be sitting yes, in the same course. set of clothes for 25 hours. Mm -hmm. um, eating, mm -hmm. eating, you know, I mean, eating, eating properly as well. Um you know, yeah. because you you don't have you have to stay in the ED because you don't know when you're going to be called. Well, that's it. That's it. You know, you can't go anywhere. I mean, at one point she says, "Just come and get me," and I said, "No, I'm not coming to get yeah. you. You're going to stay in because you yeah. have to get this seen to. You know, yeah. uh, we can't just go through it again." Uh, I, I, and it's, let's be honest, it's not just my wife. This is happening to a lot of people. I've heard stories uh, of so many people, you know, recently that it's it's it's. 12, 13, 14 hours and longer. And it's just so wrong before they're getting attended to, you know. Right, I mean... Uh, I think the hospital needs looked at from top to bottom. Yeah. In, in all honesty. Now, she did finally get a bed after 25 hours. Uh, I think she got a good sleep, yeah. didn't she? Yeah, she said she had okay. a great sleep well, last night. Well, I think I would after 25 yeah, hours. sitting in the wheelchair, so would I. I'd sleep in a bed of nails if yeah. I got one. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. funny enough you can't get that um, now hopefully she's going to get a treatment now though and hopefully get down to Galway if need be whatever it takes to get her back up on her feet again yeah well hopefully that's it you know uh, I mean it's, it's sad that this has got to be brought up but yeah. 
poking me do. You and know? your son? If did he don't, come, if nobody I, I, speaks about it. No harm to you, John, but your son would have come home to see his mum as well, <laughs> you know. And uh, Oh, yeah, of course. He's not of course, I, he's his mummy. Yeah. He's a mummy's boy, of course, yeah, he's his mummy. We're, we're, we're always number two, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> which that's is, fine, that's which that's is fine. Listen, my best wishes yeah. to your mum and family because I know it's stressed out your daughter as well and everyone else as it as is perfectly understandable. And I hope she, uh, now that she has been treated, hopefully she gets the best of treatment, uh, John. But thanks for highlighting it. It's important that we talk about this yeah. stuff because, as you say, whether it has to be top to bottom or whatever, something has to be on. This is not acceptable treatment of a person. No. John, okay. have a lovely Thank day. Okay. Take care of yourself and best Thanks, wishes Greg. to your better half. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, that's uh, John there. Uh, and as I say, we get these uh, messages all the while. Uh, lots of you texting in on the um, ARB decision because it's so emotive. I don't want you to think that I'm in any way uh, not getting to them for any particular reason. You know the way it is nowadays. Uh, I will catch up on those, but we've had lots of calls and lots of stuff to get through. I'll get to some before 12. Uh, if not, though, that story's going to run into the morning as well, so stay with us on that. Right, it is Wednesday. Kieran O'Donnell is going to be joining us shortly uh, with Business Matters. But you know what? I have an opportunity now to I have an opportunity now to get through some of these comments. Uh, wow, well, gas restrictions. So Ireland will be expected to comply, aren't we? A great little obedient country, says the caller. Another, unable to tax my car online as the site will not accept the credit card or debit cards. Tried it a few days, had to travel to the office. Seems to be a problem with the company that takes payment. But, you know, I know people who will insist on going to the office to do their car tax because they don't simply don't want to do it uh, online. And I understand that, too. Um, I think it's a disgrace what they're doing. The AIB banking car and Donna is always busy with people waiting uh, at the counter. This can't be allowed to happen. And I wish we could make a difference. You know, we do make some progress on some of these things, thankfully, and, and we can affect change. But see when the banks make up their minds? It seems it's a fait accompli. Another caller says it's not only the banks they're targeting. They're targeting old-aged pensioners. My mum's pension is being reviewed. She got it in the past three weeks. Uh, also, she got a medical card in, uh, in only for six months just because she is uh, 87. Uh, very concerned pensioners. The family is very concerned that she received it in the post. I'd like if Greg could get the Minister on uh, of Social Protection on why she's targeting uh, old-aged pensioners she feels very hurt and worried. Coffee shops that don't sell coffee would be a laughing stock. Pubs with no beer. Yeah, right. The banks are an utter disgrace. Greedy organisations that are flexing their muscles now with Ulster leaving the market. That comes in from Barry in Letterkenny. Thanks, Barry, for that. Uh, I recently opened an AIB account last week to facilitate uh, Ulster Bank closing down. I'm planning to close this account and go to another bank as a matter of principle. This is a disgrace for tourism to have them remove the cash machines. The government should show leadership. Another, I'm raging. I switched a month ago to AIB, changing direct debits, standing orders, etc. because I was an Ulster Bank customer. You think they should have mentioned this change? I was on the brink. I was on the brink myself. I feel lucky. Uh, what's it going to be taking place in these bank buildings now? Do these uh, folk lose their jobs? Uh, please, Greg, ask Pierce. I asked that one, actually, He, uh, as it relates to the travelling expenses. Um, while I understand the move to go cashless, I think this puts personal data all the more in danger. I think people not familiar with things like online banking will find it extremely difficult. Uh, and although the banks are saying there is a drop in customers, then how come the post offices are busy with ex-bank customers? Because the drop in customers was during COVID, of course. And we know that. We know they're using that. And listen, I, I think I'm, I try and be pretty honest here. Uh, I'm going to have to use... Uh, I, I can understand... Uh, people wanting banks and the reliance on cash, I get. But I've, I've said it honestly before, I use and, and don't use very much cash. It just suits me. Uh, so I welcome uh, everyone coming in with their different perspectives on this, of course, uh, so that it's a, a nice and fair and balanced conversation. Uh, here's a clue to what's on the way in 24 seconds. Business Matters, in association with the Faculty of Business at ATU Donegal. The part-time Level 8 Honours Degree in Business is delivered through a mix of online and face-to-face -face lectures. Email execedbusiness at lyit.ie. That's E-X-E-C-E-D business at lyit.ie. Or call 9186206. Okay, good morning, Kieran O'Donnell, presenter of Highland Radio's Business Matters podcast. How are you keeping? Good morning, Greg. I'm good. How are you? Uh, 101 we're on now. I missed the 100th. Yeah. Yeah, room half of one one. Congratulations! Did you just make a big deal about it? I was on a beach. I wasn't listening to you. So. Oh, just just let us slide on like a very long. Oh, well, congratulations to get one hundred podcasts out. It's a fantastic 
uh, achievement, uh, I think. So we're into the second sanctuary now. Yeah. Uh, and all of those podcasts are available for you uh, on our website, by the way, uh, or on the likes of Spotify. And, you know, obviously some of the time sensitive, but a lot of it is you can listen to them anytime when you're out and about um, because it's about people, their business, their lives and stuff. So there's a huge back catalogue for you to enjoy there. But let's talk about some news first, uh, Kieran, and uh, more good news for jobs. Yeah, Fintru, a financial services company, is set to create 300 jobs in the Kenny over the next five years. The firm, which is headquartered in Belfast and employs over 1,000 people worldwide, has set up a European delivery centre here in the Kenny. So the announcement was made by the Taoiseach Michael Martin and Larry Kenny on Friday and the project is being supported by the IDA. All right, uh, uh, we need more jobs, we need more houses. Yeah, planning permission for the construction of 90 new housing units in Larry Kenny has been lodged with Donegal County Council. The development is being proposed at Glencare Irish and Glencare Scotch by local developer PJ McDermott. So the first phase of the development includes 82 dwellings and two apartment blocks containing eight apartments while a crash has also been proposed in the application. Right, yo. Um, some celebrations down Church Lane. Yeah, as the thing was touched on a, a number of times, Greg, there will be a celebration of the Church Lane Historic Towns Initiative on Church Lane in Letterkenny this Friday, July the 22nd at 5pm. So this project involved uh, con- uh, conservation repair works to seven historic buildings along Church Lane and the initiative has served as a blueprint for summer projects in Remelton and Ballyshannon and that Remelton project actually uh, was highly commended and awarded recently as well. Yeah. So earlier on Friday, the other Kenny Terry Towns will host a special conference on dereliction in Dillon's Hotel and in conjunction with Letter Kenny Cathedral Quarter mm. and that event gets underway at 11am so they're tying in the two events. So yeah. uh, I'll be able to see what, what the findings and, and the discussion uh, is uh, during that uh, Conference well, we can election. see we can see what can be done. You know, when yeah, the, a, a, the, the a, a real there. tangible proof yeah. of what mm-hmm. can be done when when uh, a concerted effort is made. It's not a pipe dream; it's achievable. Right. Um, I hope it's for fishing, probably for cruise ships. Uh, I don't know what the story is, but anyway, big investment uh, uh, for Kitty Beggs. Yeah, the contract for the ten and a half uh, million euro pier extension at Kitty Beggs Fishery Harbour Centre has been awarded to the Cork-based firm Sorensen Civil Engineering. So the project will see the long-awaited completion of 120 metres of additional key space in the harbour and as a result, I hope that that will alleviate congestion during the peak fishing season at port. I'm not just sure exactly what uh, that what will you refer to, will it be for big or small? Oh, it's just been a smart arse. Yeah, but look, there, there are a, 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 <laughs> lot of, a lot of good things happening in Kelly Beggs. Um, I haven't talked to, to Kieran Doherty from the KFO a number of weeks ago. Uh, this is another... Uh, positive uh, development and hopefully that, that will continue doing that way. Well, uh, and um, no, no no, surprise it's included. Not a positive development according to the absolute uh, majority of no, our uh, listeners. Uh, look, uh, the, the six branches in, in Donegal AB uh, gonna clo- are going to go, go cashless by September the 30th. Bit of a Freudian slip there, yeah, probably going to well, close. I was say, when I heard that, the, the, the headlines first, I was actually in company and it was in the, distant, in, in the background. I didn't want to uh, be, be rude, so I, I thought, first of all, are they closing? But, uh, you know, th- the six branches in Donegal, Ballyshannon, Balbuffet, Bunkrana, Cairndona, Kelly Beggs and Dunlow will be cashed by the end of September. That's going to leave, at that stage, Greg, half of AAB's outlets cashless. Now, I, 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 I listened, I got a chance to listen to most of the debate today. It was very balanced. But the one question you have to ask, is it a huge surprise? No, nothing's a surprise. I, I, I Listen, think I think COVID been, has yeah. has fast tracked it. it maybe five to ten you know, years. And, and I know there's some people going, "Oh, we told you so." We all knew this was happening. Hmm. I mean, this uh, south of Donegal Town. Yeah. If you're a business with and and, and bank with AIB. Yeah. There's no there's no facility for you south but, of south of Donegal yeah. Town. That's a big and and I know other areas of the county. They'll know the geography better themselves, but that's a, yeah. a huge... But it I, might be even be further north of Donegal Town. I, I, I'm not I, sure if there's a branch in Killy Beggs, is there? Yeah. I uh, do, sorry, I beg your pardon, sorry. Yeah. You can actually now draw that line from yeah. Killy Beggs yeah. right across to Letterkenny, yeah. right? And everything south of that, there's not one AIB bank that deals in cash. And I think it's going to impact most on the, on the older generation. Yeah. So, you know... I think I talked to my mother actually about it. She's been an AB customer for for a long time. People like herself still like to operate in cash. They still like to have that uh, security mm. or privacy or as a habit as well. But again, 
when you when you sit back and look at it on the round yeah. and on balance, I heard the lady on from from Annie Sean, and she talked about the benefit uh, of, of doing the transaction and the post and yeah. the PO. Uh, That's the way it seems to be going. But you know, you're not underestimating it, and I wouldn't uh, yeah. certainly wouldn't estimate it. Now, of course. There's greater challenge potentially with with the older older generation. Yeah. Some of them uh, probably are better on apps than you and I are. But I think there's an awful lot of people maybe, and we're hearing their voices now, the younger generations, maybe, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, who go, hold on, yeah, this is my cash. I earned this. I want access to it. I want to have control over it. I don't trust banks. I don't trust necessarily big business, you know, uh, these big organizations. And, 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 and I think... There are the voices we're hearing now as well, yeah. hearing them saying, "No, this is yeah. this is how we want to operate," you know. Yeah. But anyway, the banks will do what the banks want to do, yep. seemingly, and and the government's not going to intervene. They'll huff and the puff and they'll do nothing, and they probably won't even huff and puff. Right? Okay, we'll see. They say uh, fallen uh, cash usage, but they're using data from the lockdown. Yeah, and they all think which is <laughs> insulting to us. That's <laughs> insulting. Lockdown was the was the real accelerator for where we've got to now, you know. Sure. We, we couldn't. We weren't. We couldn't go into the bank. Some People were advised not to go on. Some of it's good. Some of it's not so good. It was going to happen. Radio. Okay. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back uh, previewing this uh, this week's broad podcast, which went live for you at eleven thirty. At Kumi's Home Interiors, we pride ourselves on offering you the very best in choice, quality, and value on all home furnishings. Treat your home with a visit to Kumi's today and choose from our large range of suites, tables, beds not to mention our large selection of home accessories. Our motto is, if you see it, you can buy it, and we will deliver it to your door. Cooney's Home Interiors, Letterkenny Retail Park. Style and perfection at incredible value. Thinking of hiring a private investigator? Or do you provide a private investigation service? Did you know that private investigators must hold a PSA license, issued by the Private Security Authority? Private investigators who operate without a license and anyone employing one are breaking the law and could face prosecution and fines. For more information on how to get a license or to report on licensed private investigators, visit www.psa-gov.ie. Summer Garden Clearance at Homeland. Madrid, Leon, or Monaco patio planters. Buy one, get one free. Outback Sizzler 4-Burner Barbecue Half Price, only €199. Euro. Ice Bucket with Bluetooth Speaker, €29.99. Euro save €20. Euro. Shop our full range of offers in-store and online at homeland.ie. While stocks last. The Jive Times show is coming live from Chrysler this Thursday to celebrate Chrysler Supermarket becoming the 100th branded nearby store. We have vouchers, in-store promotions, free nearby goodie bags and free kids goodie bags filled with treats, all to give away on the day, plus the usual great music and chat. So come along and join us this Thursday from 2.30pm at the new nearby Chrysler Supermarket. Breeden's Furniture, Cooley Maville. With over 40 years of experience in furniture and floor coverings, they've got Irish-made furniture, suites, beds, mattresses, dining, flooring, slide robes and occasional furniture. Great prices and large selection now available at Breeden's Home Furnitures, Cooley Maville. Business Matters, in association with the Faculty of Business at ATU Donegal. The part-time Level 8 Honours degree in business is delivered through a mix of online and face-to-face -face lectures. Email execedbusiness at lyit.ie. That's E-X-E-C-E-D business at lyit.ie. Or call 9186206. OK, so Kieran, of course, is still with us because now we're going to focus on what's coming up in this week's podcast, Kieran. Yes, Greg, my guest this week is the Director of Strategic Initiatives at TCS in Letterkenny, Jared Grant. Jared was one of the team of eight that was involved in establishing the Primerica base in Letterkenny back in 2000 and was tasked with setting up the company's internal IT system. <coughs> Excuse me. There are over 1,000 employed at the state-of-the-art local campus opened by Primerica in 2017 at a cost of €42 million. Euro. Two years ago, Primerica was taken over by TCS and the global company has recently embarked on a recruitment drive with the aim of increasing its workforce in Letterkenny by 200 over the coming months. A career in IT was something Jared wanted to pursue from an early age, and in this clip he talks about the people who helped him along that path when he was a student at St. Eunice College in Letterkenny. 
you know, you can go right back to, uh, you know, my days in St. Judan's College, uh, where, you know, Eddie Harvey, who ran the computer department up there, was a huge influence uh, in, in trying to get people into technology at that time. And St. Judan's at the time, through Eddie and Joe English and people, had invested a lot in computer technology and computer curriculum. So I'm fortunate to benefit from that. Um, and, and a lot of the people during that, in 1990, during transition year, who did the first GCSE in computer science in Letterkenny through St. Columns and Derry, um, benefited from that computer education that Eddie, Joe and Father Ferry set up at the time. Uh, you, you mentioned those three individuals. They were, looking back, very much ahead of their time, Jared. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Not just in terms of trying to, you know, get the equipment and get funding for the equipment, but also put the different courses in places and the curriculum and try and attract students to do it, you know, because at that time, you know, some a lot of students left after intercert and, and went to work either in local factories or went to work in farming or went to work in local family businesses and, and their focus was trying to keep the guys in education and potentially, you know, looking forward to seeing that there would be a future in computer science and computer engineering and trying to drive them down that track. Yeah, there's a nice sort of full circle element to his story, Kieran, from education to... Yeah, Jared talked uh, very much as well about the importance of mentors and, and mentoring figures and he mentioned some of his teachers and I suppose they, they helped uh, him pursue his, his passion. IT was what he wanted to pursue and uh, I suppose, look, 2020 was a challenging year for, for TCS that had dealt with COVID and the, the, the takeover as well by TCS. So now he talks about uh, looking to grow the business not only in the headcount but growing the business that they do as well. Yeah, all right. Listen, great stuff. The podcast is available for you right now on our website in the on-demand section. It is uh, episode 101 of uh, Business Matters. Again, congratulations on getting the ton up, uh, Kieran. Uh, It's also available for you on Spotify and iTunes. And if you want to listen on air... Yeah, Sunday evening after the 6 o'clock. Back to its regular time slot. It was earlier last week, wasn't it? Because of the Finn Harps game, yep. Finn Harps, okay. Uh, they lost that game to Derry, didn't they? Is that that one? Unfortunately, I wasn't there, not. Did you watch the women's game? No, I was down uh, around the country with Sean McFadden over the weekend there. He was doing a cycle cycling from Mizzen to Mallon, oh, non-stop. Good. Did you, were you in a car? You went cycling? Uh, yeah, myself and Kieran Dory from Burton Port were in a car. And there were number he old. does that in an electric bike, Sean McFadden, <laughs> doesn't he? The speed of some of them, uh, you'll think, you'll think <laughs> there were a number of local, local riders as well. Uh, Rory Devon from, from Boncrana uh, was first home in an incredible time of 18 hours and one minute. And uh, Sean McFadden and, and Colin Richardson both broke the 20 hours. It's unbelievable. So it was... Uh, I mean, you have to hammer down the whole way to, to achieve that. Not the whole way, but you know what I mean? Not far off. But that was, I was, I was a great, it was a great trip. It was a real 48 hours with the difference. Yeah. All right, listen, I would say... Um, were you in a car in advance? Yeah, we're, we're with Sean. We're, you're kind of, you're, Must feel like it goes on forever because at least when they're cycling, you know, yeah, they're we're, active. We were kind of, we were just sort of slightly off them. Maybe now and again you might have to go on, maybe shoot on yeah. to get something to get diesel or get a coffee or whatever. But in the main, you were quite close by and actually you got a puncture coming out of Derry and we just happened to be behind him radio, so it worked nice out one. not so bad. All right, anyway, I don't know how we ended up talking about that, Kieran, <laughs> but I appreciate it nonetheless. All right, Kieran, thanks very much indeed. That's Cheers, uh, Kieran O'Donnell there, who is the presenter and compiler of business matters that podcast available for you right now it's an interesting story it's all different types of business and elements of business and the people behind it and their lives right okay almost on cue uh, but unrelated we have a, a email in from letter university hospital they're warning you that uh, there will be long waiting times at the ed the bottom line is is every bed in the hospital is in is full they're full there's not a room in the inn and they are only able to get someone into a bed when they get someone discharged you know, so that's that's the bottom line. Uh, and, and that's what happens when people are deemed to be ill enough uh, and admitted to the hospital, but they have to wait in ED because they say they have no beds available. So they have to wait for one out, one in, one out, one in. That's the way it is. Um, right. The emergency department at Letterkenny University Hospital continues to be extremely busy. High numbers of people attending who need to be admitted to the hospital for ongoing treatment. In the past 24 hours, 142 people have attended the ED, which is above the average for this time of year. As a result, there are high numbers of patients on trolleys in the assessment area and the hospital is at full capacity. In addition, there are pressures on bed availability in the hospital due to the number of patients with COVID. Uh, There are currently 48 patients with COVID being treated in the hospital and four areas are affected by outbreaks of COVID, which is limiting the availability of beds for patients coming in through the ED. The hospital says it acknowledges and apologises for the distress being experienced by patients and their families who are facing long delays. They say 
all available beds are in use. Every effort is being made to discharge patients who are ready to go home so that beds will become available to patients who need to be admitted at the earliest opportunity. So really, you know, there's a lot going on there. But delayed discharges seems to be a contributing factor there. All right, so that's the latest update from the ED there. Right, let's talk up to the ad. I was going to take the break and talk up to the news, but uh, we'll uh, bring some comments to you here. This is the reality of a cashless society. We went into a shop to buy diesel and our lunches. None of us could pay for what we had because the internet went down. The chip and pin needed it to work. Cash is very important. This will happen again and services will suffer for it. Another, I'm not computer literate, so I use cash and they should and you should have that right to do so as well. But that's being taken from you. Uh, people should close their AIB bank account and open a post office account rather than giving the bank anything. Do you know the problem is, is though, I don't think it matters. I don't think if everyone stopped, uh, everyone closed their, their bank account, I don't think, it, I don't think it, it would really bother them. I agree with Pierce Doherty. I use the AIB and recommend them lately to customers of Ulster Bank. When it closes, this is the start of closing them down altogether. At a later date, that comes in from Tommy. Tommy, listen, thank you very much for that. Right, okay, great to be back with you after a week off. Uh, I mean that genuinely. Um, so we're going to be back with you again tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, stay tuned because uh, John Breslin is on the way around the Northwest. And uh, I want to say thank you to Donna Marie and Caroline, who researched and produced the show today. Stay tuned. Um, as I say, John Breslin's coming up after the news with Donald at 12. It's the 50% off 